Both programs have national championship pedigree. Both were bounced last year in the Sweet 16. One is about to advance to the Elite Eight. And a date with the winner of South Carolina UCLA coming up next. And immediately the takeaway from Maryland, a big part of their game as Masonis lays it in is steal and score. That's right, steal, score, steal, score. That's Maryland. Capital One starting lineup for the Fighting Irish. You'll note no Dara Mabry and no Olivia Miles. They go with the big lineup after they lost two of their superstars to knee injuries during the season. And for the Maryland Terrapins, Shy Sellers has really emerged as a big time running mate with Diamond Miller. Now because the ball went across the plane and was established in the front court, the 10 second count is off because I was starting to wonder. I was watching the clock tick down and that's a great start for Maryland. Steel score and then their pressure already taking Notre Dame 10 seconds into the shot clock and they're just initiating their offense. And it's already down to five. Westbelt creates a little space, comes up short. Lauren Ebo blocked by Miller and then stripped loose. Sellers with the drop off and the three ball from Brene Alexander. And here comes the heat off of made baskets for Maryland. It's going to require all five Notre Dame players to get the ball across midcourt. KK Bransford was handling in the initial possession. No true point guard for the Irish. So they've got some folks that have had to move around on the court. Westbelt able to knock it down. A thousand point score for the Irish. Yeah, Maddie Westbelt to me is so versatile in her offensive skill set. She can play stretch, but she's more than a stretch three or four. She's more like a hybrid Beth because she can make decisions with a ball on top of the floor. She doesn't just stretch to shoot it. 20 point game in their first round win over Southern Utah. And here is Westbelt with the rebound. Irish will run selectively. Westbelt, and now Watson drops it off to Ebo. Their front court in their first two games, Debbie, combining for over 50 points and over 50 rebounds. And that's the difference right there. Maryland speed and quickness, their ball pressure, and then the high-low game of Notre Dame with that post size. That's the contrast here today in which style will work to advance to the Elite Eight. Citron steps behind the screen. She's got some big decisions to make today, right, Debbie, on when to shoot and when to initiate for someone else. Well, I think it's all about scoring for her because they need her offense. I mean, this is a Maryland team that averages just shy of 80 points a game, and you're not going to be able to stop them. I think you're going to have to score with them. Citron attacks the rim. That's what I mean. She's got to still look to call her own number. Her shooting's been a bit off since the Injury to Olivia Miles, in fact, sub 30% through the first two rounds. So this is a good start for her. And the other thing, too, as Abby Myers hits the mid-range jumper inside that zone is it's not like Notre Dame is a catch-and-shoot three. Without Dara yeah. Mabry on the floor, without Olivia Miles, Sonia Citron would be the recipient of the catch-and-three. So it's catch-and-shoot three. So it's not like you got to get in the paint and kick. you got to play the high-low game. That's their strength on offense. Former national champion, Point guard for the Fighting Irish. Now, after a long time, assistant coach for Muffet McGraw, Neil Ivey, who was the ACC Coach of the Year after guiding the Fighting Irish to the regular season championship on the final day of the regular season. As you see, Brenda Freeze, 2006 title. One of, one of just a couple of active coaches that have won a national championship. There's just five, Taro, Tara, Gino, Dawn, Kim, and Brenda. And if you need their last names, you haven't been following the history of our game very well. Miller. And Sellers whistled for the walk. Our officials today, Eric Bruton, Jesse Dickerson, and Teresa Turner in the striped shirts. One of the things that Neil Ivey told us yesterday in our meeting with her is that Mississippi State did help prepare them for pressure. Sam Purcell did a fantastic job at Mississippi State this year with small and quick. And they went against that and they came out with a win. 
Citron trying to shake off. Looks like she took a hit to the nose. Cass Prosper, the freshman, turns it over. There's two white jerseys in front, and you've got to read the back side. There's no chance that pass is getting in there. Sellers in and out. Maryland will take this tempo. They get another steal, and then Lauren Ebo whistled for the reach in. I mean, this is a tips, deflections, risk, reward kind of defense for Brenda Fries, and that's the way they're setting the tone early. They are making it difficult for Notre Dame to run their stuff right now. That's why they got to score in transition. If they can score in transition or score in their high-low game, that will help them against Maryland's style of defense. Well, and as much as they'd love to get out to a great start, they're of the belief, Debbie, that they can try and wear Notre Dame down as well through the course of 40 minutes with this style of play. Myers can't knock it down. Irish have turned it over five times in their first nine possessions. KK Bransford, that one won't go. Ebo, who has just been a monster on the glass for the Irish in the postseason can't get the second chance to go. There goes Diamond off the glass into their transition game. Who needs an outlet pass? We don't need an outlet <laughs> pass anymore in the game. Let's go. Myers, the transfer from Princeton with the spin. And, and here's why that's important, Beth, because you can immediately put pressure on the transition defense of Notre Dame. So when you rebound and you don't need an outlet, and you push and you run hard and wide, you're going to create opportunities before Notre Dame's defense gets organized. Prosper, fouled by Masonis on the drive. 9-6, Terps over Irish early in the Sweet 16. And they are trying to set that tone early. Five points off of five Notre Dame turnovers as they've been able to steal and score. And they take Notre Dame deep into their offensive options too. That's the other part of being disruptive in your defense. Notre Dame hanging around due to their work on the glass. Prosper with a couple of offensive rebounds and finally ripped out of there by Lavender Briggs. And here is Alexander. You got to respect the three, and she goes by the defender for the layer. And that's why you push in transition, right, Beth? You run the floor wide. Maryland is so skilled at offensively and doing those things well. It's the kind of offensive habits that you create from day one. Terps have scored the last six in a row, so now they Notre Dame gets Citron off the point and back to the wing. They like to run that Iverson cut and they like to slip Westbeld off that screen, but Maryland defended it very well. Now watch how quickly on a long closeout against a post player, that's where the speed versus the size becomes a factor in transition. Maryland is all gas, no brakes. Notre Dame, due to injuries to their starting backcourt, has had to adjust, and they are playing with a stronger front line here in the postseason. Bransford hangs and hits in the lane. And think about the job that Neil Ivey has done as Maryland gets a layup on the other end. Speed versus size to get here to this point. Yep. What a job she and her staff, Neil Ivey, have done. Minus a really good backcourt with experience. You have to remake your team here in the postseason. Watson, nice spin inside. The transfer from Oregon lays it up and in. Both coaches did well in the portal this offseason. For Maryland in particular, nine new players after they lost five of their top six scorers from a year ago, including the LSU All-American Angel Reese. And a bump and a foul underneath on Westbell. This is just a tremendous job to advance pass. Eyes up on the rim, sprinting the floor hard, getting behind that Notre Dame defense. Debbie, they have assisted on all six of their buckets here in the first quarter. And now a trip to the free throw line for Bree McDaniel, the freshman from Chicago.
Brenda already showing she'll go a little deeper into her bench to get some fresh legs out there to keep this tempo up. Well, they want to run uh, Lauren Ebo. They want to make her work. They want to run Kylie Watson, make them work up the floor. Good press break that time by the Irish. So usually Olivia Miles would take care of handling all the decision making in the open floor. Now you're asking everyone to do that at a high rate of speed under duress from a good defense. Miles, an AP All-American. They lost her in the season finale. Dara Mabry, their top three point shooter, they lost her earlier in the year to a knee injury, and here they go. Nobody in the tournament is scoring more in the lane than Notre Dame, as you see the two star guards in street clothes. Ebo catches with two feet in the paint, forget about it. What a great pass off that double by Watson. Myers hangs and hits. Debbie Ebo brings them tremendous postseason experience. The transfer from Texas has been in the Elite Eight the last two years right. with the Longhorns. Good pressure from the Terps to turn them over. Watch the double team comes right here and then watch her the dive to the bucket. This is a great job by Ebo to make herself available. Notre Dame six baskets, but they've also turned it over six times here in the first quarter. They trail by four. Myers off the dribble, mid-range, no. Miller talking with Myers. It was important, you know, we talked to Brenda Freeze. With all the newcomers, you know, she talked a lot with this group about it's a marathon, not a sprint. And chemistry has been a big deal for them throughout the season, building towards the postseason. Ebo with the catch and the extra step. You mentioned it earlier. Uh, Maryland lost 85% of their offense. They lost some good players. They went to other places. And Brenda Freeze continues to retool it. It was actually not after their Notre Dame win, but the ne very next game, they got hammered at home by Nebraska, and they talked about that as the turning point in December. They've won 14 of their last 16 games. The only team that's beaten them, Iowa did it twice. Look at the hustle by McDaniel. Of course, the Hawkeyes already into the Elite Eight with Caitlin Clark. This is just great hustle right here. They call a foul there on the Irish. Yeah. This could be a big postseason, Debbie, for the Big Ten. They, that lone national championship sticks out more and more. It was Purdue back in 1999 under the direction of Carolyn Peck. And uh, Stephanie, Stephanie White, White, White at the, the point with White Trophy Lucari winner. Figs, yeah. That's the only one for the Big Ten. And they've got uh, some teams running deep this year. Hey, the NCAA Women's Championship continues. Speaking of that, with more Sweet 16 coverage today and then the Elite Eight tomorrow night and Monday night for you in prime time, all gearing up towards the Final Four in Dallas and the National Championship Sunday afternoon this year on ABC. Go to NCAA.com for all the latest on all 90 championships. I'm not sure why the officials have taken this long at the monitor. Usually they're over there to check on timing. You want to get the shot clock. Well, there, was there a change of possession there? It was a loose ball. Sellers trying to get some more points off turnovers. They've had six steals already in the game. And whoop, they'll give it right back. And Brenda immediately says, turn up the pressure. who joined the team mid-season, graduated high school early, goes with the left hand to lay it in. Why does everyone keep falling on the floor? There's a couple of times players have just tripped or slipped. Shot and game clock about the same. The lob over the top and the turnover. 
Irish can tie it or take the Come lead. On now. The you got to make a better pass than that. Look at Prosper right here showing off her skill set. Playing off two feet in the paint. Gets to the front of the rim, finishes with her offhand. Finishing school inside. West Bell checks the clock back to Prosper. Good if it goes. And it's a two point game through the first quarter. The first of our four Sweet 16 games today. And Maryland with the early lead over Notre Dame. Coach Maryland said they wanted to use their speed to their advantage in this one in the first quarter. How would you assess how your team has handled it so far? Yeah, I thought that they got out a couple times transition, got that one easy leak out, so I thought that was effective for them. We adjusted, we got back, um, and kind of shortened their run. You have eight turnovers in that quarter as well. What are some things that you need to adjust offensively just to get settled in? Yeah, I mean, just being composed, having composure. We knew what to expect. Um, we have to be stronger with the ball, ball fake, and make sure that we're not putting our teammates in the wrong bad spots, half court and at the corner. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you. Well, we talked about this being a big story, Debbie, and Notre Dame. The eight turnovers, five points off for Maryland. The Terps already with six steals and seven fast break points. It has a physical and an emotional and a mental effect on a team, right? You already know that you're shorthanded in the backcourt. And Citron is capable, and she's getting help. KK Bransford's done a little ball handling. Maddie Westfeld is certainly capable of making decisions on the top of the floor. But it's the wear down, relentless 40 minutes that you worry about if you're Neil Ivy, but right now you're kind of going, it's a two possession, a one well, possession game. They, We're they in good got, shape. They got 12 of their 14 in the paint. So the speed working and the size working. And a two point game as we start out the second quarter. Notre Dame switching up out of the zone. They've gone to man and they've gone with, uh, staying with that tall lineup to give it a try. Corner three and an open look and for Lavender Briggs. That's the issue. If you're going to go man, and Ebo's got to guard someone, and she doesn't want to come out of the paint. 37% shooter. She can't get there. They've got her. They've got Abby Myers to stretch the defense. Renee Alexander off the bench to stretch the D. Ebo's got to work hard to shape up right there. Look, see, that's when you got to find her in that high low game. Masonis with the rebound, and here comes Sellers. Now Masonis knows Ebo's on her. That's when you get to this point right here, and you're trying to get to the Elite Eight. You're playing in the Sweet 16. Those are the matchups you've got to find. You've got to figure that out as a team. You've got to know that's where your advantage lies right now inside the game. West Bell. Down the left side of the lane, around and out. Goes back to the troops. Okay, watch right here. Here's Ebo, and then watch the person gets out here to the corner, okay? Now, right there for Maryland, that is Lavender Briggs, who's a good three-point shooter. Well, Ebo doesn't even want to come out there. And she's wide open on a catch and shoot. That's too easy for the Terrapins. She's got six points for the Terps. Shot clock winding down. Sellers splits the defenders. Tough shot. Good help coming from Ebo that time. See if they can get something going for Citron. She only took two shots in that first quarter. And they were both early. One was a drive, and the other was a read. Off a ball screen. Here she is with a touch. She's their first option. And Maryland's switching to keep pressure on her. Transfer with the air ball. It's the length of Maryland and their multiple looks defensively with Cheyenne Sellers and Diamond Miller. That's not just 6'2, 6'3, but long and athletic. Pins on it, a point guard that came from South Florida and played for Jose Fernandez, so you know she understands the game. 
Miller's back out there now for now. Number one in white. Everything close to 20 per game. Pins on no. And that'll stay at this end. This pace, though, is a Notre Dame pace right now. If if Maryland can't use their speed 94, they got to use it 50, meaning side to side. Maryland turns it over. Well, since the Miles injury, Notre Dame is three and one, but their scoring has dropped precipitously. And so they are probably looking for a game more in the 50s than with Miles they could win in the 70s. Well, and it's taken away some of the scoring punch of Olivia of um, Sonia Citron as well. She had 24 in the regular season matchup against Maryland did Citron. Well, Kylie Watson's really fighting for position inside. Good mid-range. Nice job of moving the ball. How about Prosper off the bench early? Giving him a big boost. Three-pointer off the mark. Here's a look at what has happened since Miles went out. That uh, That's about 17 fewer points per game and the shooting off about 5% without her ability to uh, score herself but also distribute. Well, the pace of the game has changed because of the size factor on the floor. Right? Now, this is a lineup that I really like for Notre Dame because West Belt can do that. This is the lineup that I like because of her ability to play the four and stretch a little bit. She can open up the interior for Watson to post up strong now. Junior out of Kettering, Ohio, following in the footsteps of her older sister, Kat. Both of them 1,000-point scorers at Notre Dame. You know, it's interesting here, Beth, like most teams play four out, one in, right? But we've got three teams here. South Carolina plays with a double low post. LSU plays with a double low post. And Notre Dame is doing that now since their backcourt injuries. Ransford leaves it off to Watson. More paint points for Notre Dame. And a 7-0 run for the Irish to take the lead. Ladies, Neil Ivy told me this team is playing with love. They lost their fire in their heartbeat with Dara and Olivia on the sidelines, but they said they know their personnel. Neil said just them understanding, them believing in themselves. During this tournament, they questioned if they had enough. They believe now that they have enough, and you can see it right now on the floor. Citron to the free throw line. Sonia's a 77% shooter. The NCAA Men's Basketball Elite Eight continues tonight on TBS. For more information on game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. Men's bracket has blown up. <laughs> How about the Miami Hurricanes? Right? Men and the women moving on. Both are in the Elite Eight. What a great job by Katie Meyer. Got two ACC teams that have already advanced. Notre Dame trying to join them. Louisville last night with a 10-point win over Ole Miss. Congratulations to Jeff Walls and that group playing again to go to the Elite Eight. How about Picasso Robinson defending on Caitlin Come Clark on, on Sunday? That's no going to be fun to watch. Yeah, no, no surprise about Picasso Robinson's <laughs> role for the Cardinals. And Haley Van Lith has been playing well in the postseason yes, sure also. Has. He was not at all pleased with the way that South Carolina was able to take her out of the game last year in the Final Four, and she's been building towards getting back. Citron with the nice drive and a timeout, Maryland, as the Fighting Irish have scored 11 straight. It's a great coaching adjustment by Neil Ivey. She changes the lineup and changes the rhythm of the game. Sonia Citron again to the rim. Thanks, Al. Aaliyah Boston and the undefeated South Carolina Gamecocks are on deck. They will take on UCLA. The Bruins, one of just five teams this year to stay within 10 points of South Carolina as they faced off earlier in the season. And Diamond really forcing it right there around three blue jerseys. 
Aliyah Boston, last year's National Player of the Year. The offense is a lot better than last year's championship team. And Debbie, the defense may be historic for South I Carolina. Think, I think it's the best defense we have ever seen Ooh. in the women's game. We have some numbers to back that up. It's not just their length and their depth and their versatility. It's their field goal percentage defense combined with their block shots. It's unlike anything we've ever seen. Dawn Stanley even thinks she's got the best defensive team she's ever had. That does it for me. This Sweet 16 has a new look. For the first time, four teams are led by four black head coaches. I came to Ole Miss because I wanted to be under a coach that looked like me. I feel like Coach Joe is a believer, a fighter. That's somebody I want to represent. Don, this has become routine. It really makes me emotional. I am forever in debt trying to repay the game. Miel, you've been here before. To see where we are now with the resilience of this group, I'm super proud. Yo and Kenny, welcome to the party. If I can continue to run a program like this, I think it can open up doors for a lot of other guys who look like me. Let's dance. Congrats are in order for all four coaches, but specifically for Neil Ivey. She said she's living out her passion for the game, and it's allowing her to break the barriers, to represent and inspire. She said her mom and also Muffin McGraw have been huge in just allowing her to be in the position that she is now, but she just continues to make great barriers and set history in this game. She was the first black female coach in the ACC to also win the regular season title. So she continues to inspire for sure, but she said, I definitely love when my team can look at me and understand that they can also see her and be her. Yeah, she was a champion uh, point guard at Notre Dame for Muffet McGraw. Muffet with two of her former assistants in the Sweet 16. Kevin McGuff also with Ohio State. They're playing UConn later. But has set a tremendous example in her uh, 20 years now at Notre Dame in all different capacities including a fabulous adjustment in this game, Debbie. This lineup has the Irish on a 13-0 run that just came to an end and held Maryland on about a six-minute scoring drought. Yep, Maryland turned the ball over a little bit. Now they score, they set their pressure, and this is where Notre Dame has been taken a little bit deeper into their offensive options. They've gone to a little more Cass Prosper and a little less Lauren Ebo yes. at court time. Smaller lineup, a little bit more uh, pos positionless, if you will. And Watson's been battling on the block all game. And watch right here. She's going to just knock Cheyenne Sellers. That would be two on Watson. And now Ebo comes back in the game. Remember, Ebo missed five games earlier in the year. She had a lower leg injury. Let's see if Brenda immediately tries to take advantage. Well, Notre Dame immediately goes zone. Miller wants a touch, working on Ebo and a foul. Let's see, is that on her or Westbelt? It's a good job splitting that double. And see, that's another spot on the floor. Brenda Free's working to get Diamond Miller quality touches. We've seen her catch it beyond the arc. We've seen her in transition. Now she works her to the block. It's the versatility of the offensive package that Coach Freeze has for Diamond Miller. And that's also the second foul now on Maddie Westbelt. So two frontline players with two fouls for the Irish. Diamond Miller misses on the first sixth in the country in free throws attempted and made this year. Spends a lot of time there usually. Nice drop off for Prosper. I mean, it's a little thing, but Abby Myers gambled on a, a pass and it allowed Notre Dame to switch sides of the floor in transition. And that's hard to guard when you can advance past the ball through that kind of pressure. Masonis out of the short corner and look out, Notre Dame. That is the third personal foul on Westbelt. I mean, I get Neil Ivy leaving her out there because you trust her, because you need her offense. She's gonna get called for this one on a box out foul. She had a 20 point game in the first round, a 15 rebound game in the second round. A key cod for the Irish out. And another foul down low. 
That's two on Lauren Ebo. This is a smart play by Cheyenne Sellers. When the defender has their back to you on the baseline, just throw it off their butt and go get it. Now she draws a foul to get to the line. All Big Ten team this year, as well as the All Big Ten defensive team. She brings what Maryland calls the dog mentality. She was instrumental in helping to build that chemistry, their aggressive nature on the court. They were one of the more impressive ball clubs through the first two rounds of the tournament. Good catch by Brainsford down low and a foul on Miller. That's a great set that we haven't seen. Neil Ivey digging deep into the playbook. This is a great slice cut right here. It's a terrific job by KK Bransford. Bransford short, freshman out of Cincinnati. Missed them both. Two minutes to go here in the first half. Winner advances to the Elite Eight and a date with South Carolina or UCLA. That's our second game coming up here in Greenville. And then a double header later today from Seattle. See, Maryland has played on the top or outside that zone defense. Abby Myers did score in the lane on an earlier play. And now you take a long three and a quick transition up the floor by Sonia Citron. You got to get inside that Notre Dame defense. Not play on the outside of that zone. Citron with eight here in the first half. Diamond Miller has yet to score a basket in the first half. There you go. She heard me. And she is a, a decent three-point shooter, but she's really good off the bounce. That would be her 19th three of the season. Ebo with the catch over the top of the foul. After a shaky start against the pressure, Notre Dame is starting to pick it apart. Well, they're moving the ball. They're playing over the top of the pressure. They're keeping the floor spaced. And as Neil told Angel, they're keeping the ball out of spots where Maryland can trap. You can't throw the ball in the dead corners and, and over the free throw or, or the midcourt line. You got to stay off the sideline. Ebo's a 73% shooter. Hey, we got more Elite Eight coverage for you coming up. The nine seed Miami against LSU and then Louisville, Iowa. Sunday night coverage starts at 9 o'clock. The Hurricanes can match the lowest seed to ever reach the Final Four. Somewhere Gary Blair is smiling. His Arkansas <laughs> squad in 1998, a nine seed, the yeah. lowest ever to get there. Uh, Christy Smith is smiling also. Oh, yeah. Satya Messel. Yes. Difference in this one, Notre Dame turned it over eight times in the first quarter, but only one time in the second. And they have feasted on Maryland giveaways. Just playing inside that zone. Look at the collapse. Now you got to find the open shooter, and there it is. Four blue jerseys around Miller, and she gets it to Brene Alexander, who's shooting 50% from downtown in the tournament. That's, a, that's the way you beat it. You got to go inside out, collapse that D. Wow, there was a lot of contact wow. on the ball handler. There should have been a foul on Maryland. Diamond Miller's right here, and you're going to see Alexander go out to the corner. This is a great job of moving the ball. And knocking down a wide open triple. Excuse me, that, that, is, that is Alexander in the corner. Good spacing, collapse the zone, kick it to the outside. Final seconds of the half. Maryland for the lead. Briggs doesn't get it off in time. Mismanaged the final possession, but the Terps end the half on a 12-5 run. And we got a one-point ball game through the first 20 minutes. 
Lynch get it over to Angel Wright. So, I mean, you guys look like a completely different team in that second quarter. You also went on a 13-0 run. What was the shift for you guys? Um, I think just being aggressive. I think that their press really um, made us hesitate in the beginning. So, our coach talked about us, talked to us about just breaking it, being aggressive. I mean, look to score, don't slow it down, because that's what they want us to do. Thanks. Thank you. That is today's Game Changer, brought to you by Under Armour, and those points in the paint we kind of expected that advantage. What we did not expect was the advantage on points off of turnovers and fast break points for the Irish. And, and this is the way Maryland started the game. Brenda Fries told us from her locker room speech, set the tone. They did that in the first quarter to start the game. Here we are in the third quarter, getting another turnover. And can they get Diamond Miller going? Just one for four, four points in that first half. She scored 31 on the Irish in their regular season matchup. The only opponent to drop 30 on Notre Dame all season. Here she is, one and white. I think it's the quality of the catch and what she does with it. Now that was a much better shot selection because she's capable of that long stretch to the rim. It's where she catches the ball. Let's check in with Angel. Coach Brenda Fries told me a couple adjustments that they need to make is just be a little bit more dominant on the boards. Remember at the tip of the game, we said Neil Ivey mentioned to her team, they have to dominate the glass. They've only given up two offensive boards to this point. And another thing Brenda Fries said to be was they saw a, be a much better flow in that second quarter towards the end because they were more aggressive, moving downhill, getting to more free throws. They went four for six in that stretch. Sellers and one. What an incredible clear out. What a great set by Maryland. Watch all the white jerseys go to this side of the floor and that opens up the lane. This is a great take off the bounce. The help is late. Bucket for Sellers. And that is now the third personal foul on Lauren Ebo. So two frontline starters, Ebo and Watson with three fouls. And Maryland goes back on top. Here comes a diamond press. We hadn't seen this. It's a little bit more three-quarter. Backed it off a little bit. Citron open look. And see, this is where you miss Dara Mabry on the backside of pressure. And that's three consecutive turnovers to start for Notre Dame. And then Maryland gives it back. There's Dara Mabry, one of the great three-point shooters in the history of Notre Dame. And on the backside of pressure is where she stretches the floor because she shoots the three so well, she makes your defense stretch the length of the floor. 301 career triples. She and her two older sisters, who also played for the Fighting Irish, combined for over 800 in their Notre Dame careers. 803, I think, is the number. Can Notre Dame get a possession without a giveaway? That's happened the first three times they've had the ball here to start the third quarter. Maryland doing a good job here, switching, keeping pressure on the ball handler. Maybe a little bit too much right there. That's their third foul on ball pressure outside the arc this afternoon. Trying to turn up the heat. Isn't it nice to say this afternoon in a basketball game? <laughs> <laughs> Love this early tip. Sun will be shining when we get out of here. Famous last words. Last time I said that, I ended up doing a 17-inning softball game, Debbie. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Quadruple overtime on the way. Bransford off the bounce. Offensive rebound for the Irish. Their board work doing some damage. They don't get the second chance points. And now Miller, the one-woman fast break. Well, One counters. for six right now. She just steps through when you have the left. Go up with the left hand or pull up and shoot a bank shot. West Belt lobs over the top to Watson. Triple team and she finds Bransford. Good assist for Watson. Crossover, Cheyenne Sellers and a trip to the line. 
The ball's going to go in here to the post, and then you're going to see the dive as Maryland's defense, everyone turns their head. And here comes a wide open lane for KK Bransford. It's a great cut and a better pass by Watson to recognize the dive on the backside. But as a post player, you drill that every day. The double comes, you look for the dive, then you look for the skip because you don't want to throw the ball back to the same side of the floor. So it's something that Neil Ivey and her team work on all the time. Sellers gets the first, a 79% free throw shooter. Two for two. She's got seven. Maryland with the lead, even though Miller only has a couple of buckets and now another foul on ball pressure. I don't know about that one because I thought Citron grabbed her arm. You know, sometimes we're sitting on the same angle as the officials. <laughs> Hard fall for McDaniel. Well, McDaniel getting extended minutes here. Prosper long on the shot. Sellers lost the handle. Open floor turnover. And the deuce for Notre Dame. Six for Bransford, and they give it away again. I mean, how do you even think that pass has a chance of getting there? You shouldn't. Maryland usually with a huge turnover advantage, but they are not helping themselves here with these giveaways to the Fighting Irish. In the press right now, or as a foul on Watson, that's off the ball setting an illegal screen. Watch Watson right here as the ball gets put in. Honestly, I don't know what's wrong yeah. with that screen. That's her third. See, now I don't like to be spending my time on the officials. Inside, Sellers is carrying the load right now for Maryland as they go back up by two. He's got nine. Citron. She'll initiate. Watson on the mismatch, got it. When Notre Dame is really clicking right here, they look connected. ACC has been challenging this year, and they won the regular season. There's Miller on the baseline. Let's see if that gets her going. Notre Dame trying to be the third team from the ACC to advance to the Elite Eight. Louisville is in last night. And yesterday, Miami, Katie Meyer wearing that Cinderella slipper. Well spelled with the air ball. This is just a great job. Screen and roll. It's a simple play and very well executed. Daniel off the bounce. And that's going to be four on Watson. Notre Dame has done a really good job of taking away the three from Maryland as well. This is a Maryland team that makes seven a game. I think they've done a pretty good job of guarding the three here in the second half. They did give up five in the first half. So you're forcing Maryland to put the ball on the floor. McDaniel, 66% at the line, the freshman. And Aranda, throw that full court press out again. Citron, marked by Alexander, making her go left. Sonia got it up and in. What a great take. And then right off the deck, she gets a deflection. Sonia Citron can finish with her left hand. Now into double digits with 10. 
Notre Dame will allow McDaniel to shoot all day. Westbelt got the advantage on the run. Matty Westbelt with the one-hander. Miller, just that won't go. No flow right now to what Maryland is doing. Miller going to work inside, rebounds her own miss, second chance up and in. And she shows a little emotion, Diamond does. And McDaniel slams into Citron. Forty-four, forty-two. Terps on top of the Irish here in the third. The Hokies and the Gamecocks are the only remaining one seeds in the tournament for the first time in 25 years. Two one seeds got bounced before the Sweet 16. The product is the narrative. Been saying it all for a long time, not just this season. That's how good the game is. Talent is stretching out around the country. Some of the big stories coming up. We, we could still have a Tennessee-UConn uh, game in the regional final. Virginia Tech can still get to the final four for the very first time. Virginia Tech and Tennessee did play earlier yeah. this year. Virginia Tech won that game. Tennessee's playing very well under head coach Kelly Harper. Few teams have been on the roller coaster ride that Ohio State has been on this year yeah. with their injury issues. I, I guarantee you that game will be entertaining between Ohio State and UConn. Yeah. Ohio State will play 94 feet of full court pressure. They're always in the game with their three point shooting ability and their ability to turn teams over. And the other subplot, the return of AZ Fudd has UConn oh feeling my pretty good. They are trying to get back to the Final four for the 50th That's, year in a row. That is amazing. That number's yep. phenomenal. Got a tight one here in Greenville. And the three ball is good from Lavender Bridge. She and Alexander, good shooters off the bench for the Terps. So it's an indicator with Ebo, it's zone. When there's no Ebo, it's man to man. And Notre Dame is doing a good job of mixing it up because they need her on the floor to yeah. score. They've been uh, doubling up the Terps in the paint, but they've got foul problems with all three of their frontline starters. Prosper short on the shot. Watson is already out right now with four personal fouls. Miller looking to attack. Swatted out by Prosper. I mean, look at Prosper right here playing some D. Very nice. Freshman from Montreal. Ebo has got it. Double doubles in her first two tournament games for Ebo. Quick shots here on both sides, last few possessions. Miller leading the break. Count it. That might be the emotional lift that Diamond and her teammates may need. One bounce, hard take off the glass, absorbs the contact to get to the line. And puts another foul on Lauren Ebo. That's her fourth. So two front line starters with four fouls for the Irish, and Niel Ivey will have to dig deep. Nat Marshall, the junior from Queens, will come on as Ebo departs. 11 points now for Diamond Miller. Isn't it interesting that neither team really has a natural point guard on the floor? The speed versus size matchup continues. The speed starting to take over with the size in foul trouble. Miller back to the free throw line for one of the best in the game at doing just that, drawing fouls. She's so long and athletic and when she's motoring up the floor with her handle, which has gotten much better. 
She's hard to guard in the open court at 6-3. She has a handle like a guard. Maryland trying to extend their largest lead of the ball game, and the relationship between player and coach, Angel, is a good one. Absolutely. How about the evolution of Diamond Miller from her freshman year to now? Brenda Freeze said in her first year, she couldn't even give me eye contact. She was shy, anxious about stepping on the floor. Now she's completely opposite. At times you can see her. She's the loudest voice on the floor, making sure everyone is together in huddles. She is the leader, and it's by far. There's no question about it, her maturity and her, the way she's handled her business is what you go to college for, quite mm -hmm. frankly. And she gets the block shot right there. Maryland enjoying a 7-0 run. And just to put a button on that, by the way, with Diamond Miller going right now and Aaliyah Boston going next, you might be looking at the top two picks in the WNBA draft in a couple of weeks. You talk about guard-like skills handling up the floor, off the glass. Sellers, 9-0 run for Maryland. Terps taking advantage of the foul problems for the Irish. Sellers and Miller taking over here in the third quarter for Maryland. They've got 17 of their 22 points. They are outscoring the Irish by 10 through the first seven and a half minutes, Debbie. Yeah, and they're going off the bounce. They're getting out in transition. They're using their length. They've set the tone with their defense. They're tough to go against uh, on the for the opposing opposing team because of their length and their switching defense. This is a much you know you see them both teams make their runs at, at different times based on personnel. Yep. We've framed it all day as the Maryland speed against the Notre Dame size, and right now for the Irish, too much of that size is sitting down. Four fouls on Kylie Watson. Four fouls on Lauren Ebo, and Maddie Westbeld continues to play with three. Well, Maryland goes to the free throw line. Or excuse me, Notre Dame to the free throw line. Maryland putting Notre Dame on the bonus early. Well, I'd say 230, like they've done a good job of not putting them on the line to this point, playing good defense. Citron hits on the first. She has had to adjust not only to moving over and running point quite a bit, but she is at the top of everybody's scouting report. She's seeing a lot of defensive attention as Maryland is able to score on the break. But she's getting more comfortable and more confident as the game goes on because she knows with her size, she can see over the top of that pressure. I think it's a situation too now they've been without Mabry and Miles long enough that they're starting to play like they got nothing to lose. They're playing loose, they're playing free. As you mentioned, together, not on that possession. Sellers, step back. Masonis offensive rebound. It's the transition push. It's the thrust up the floor. Oh, they're going to call Citron for a push off. Offensive foul on the Irish. That's her first. It's that wear down effect that Brenda Fries was talking about. There you see the push off. It's that steal score, steal score mentality that they have learned to play with. And it has allowed them to build this double digit lead to this point. The two seed pulling away from the three seed. 13-1 run over the last three minutes. Miller scoops it up, no. Tip back out top. Diamond, she is hunting shots right now. Can't get either one of those to go. Those are two really good quality catches. Brenda Fries runs a play for her to get the ball on the elbow. Usually she can score from there, but then she comes in and steals it. Maryland, no. Long rebound, they get another one. And Brenda says, hey, let's set something up for a good one here. Got a, yeah, two for one here, so you want to make sure you get a good possession. Sellers. 
Plus, I think Sellers needed a break. Mm. Miller gonna have to jack one up. And Masona steps out. I always love the hustle of Faith Masonis. I think it, it's a non-stat player for Brenda Freeze. She doesn't stuff the stat sheet, but when you grow up as one of 10, it's survival of the fittest, and she plays like that. She's one hungry. Of kids. One of 10. She's one of their captains. Yeah, one of their vocal leaders. We're gonna take this down as far as you can to not give Maryland much time on the backside. Citron blocked by Sellers. I think that one was blocked by Alexander. Or excuse me, Briggs. Officials getting together. Was there a change of possession? Shot clock violation right here. I mean, and, and should there be more time on the clock? Blocked by Sellers. KK Bransford. The ball goes out of bounds. It's when it crosses the plane and lands out of bounds. So they're gonna look at the There's time. Review for a possible timing here. Now, it doesn't touch the rim, so there's no reset. Another shot clock. And now determining how much time left for Maryland, I believe, here to get a shot up. It's gotta hit something out of bounds. Big third quarter for the Terps. They have doubled up Notre Dame on the scoreboard. Sellers and Miller have established their presence. Don't forget the Sweet 16 continues next here on ESPN with undefeated South Carolina and UCLA. And then the games from Seattle coming up later. Ohio State UConn on ABC and Tennessee Virginia Tech on ESPN2. Aliyah Boston, the reigning player of the year and defensive player of the year as well. One of the front runners to win that award again. And then AZ Fudd and UConn and Elizabeth Kitley, the two-time ACC player of the year. So after they check the review, they are actually giving the ball back to the Irish here with two tenths left on the shot clock. Well, there's nothing you can do with, poop, you know, with point two. You can't, you have, you have to tap it. So you got to throw it to the rim. You can't catch it and shoot it. You just don't want to commit a foul if you're Maryland here. It's also six seconds back on the game clock for Maryland to work with. There's the lob inside, and there's the violation. That cost them a second and a half, and Brenda's like, hey, wait a second. Yeah. Now she wants to put a little more time on the clock, because that was 1.5 went off the game clock. But it should only be point two, right? Isn't that all that was left well, on Well, you it? have to take at least point three off the clock. It's a rule, so it should go from six to maybe 5.7. I'm, I'm an English major. I, I'm not allowed to talk I, I, about math. They I'm don't doing let me math. talk about math. I'm doing math right you now. Talk, you do the math. It's a, it's a, a, a rule. You got to take at least point three <laughs> off. Looks like point five, so five and a half. and Maryland will have to go the length of the floor. You want to make them come back to the ball if you're Notre Dame. You can't let them catch it in a circular motion or moving up the other way. And you got to be careful you don't draw a charge here if you're Maryland. Sellers checks, has time. Giant Sellers. And the Terps will take the lead into the fourth quarter. 10 minutes to go for a spot in the Elite Eight. 
How about Sellers and Miller with the combined 17 points in that third quarter? How impressive was that, and what do you want to build on? Yeah, uh, the more of the same. I thought they were really aggressive being able to get to the free throw line. We play off of them, so we need more of the same. You know this is a game of runs. How do you close a couple of keys to finish out this one? Yeah, defense and rebounding. Not about our offense right now. It's just uh, you know being able to defend and get stops and rebound the basketball against them. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Maryland opening up the 12-point lead. They held the Irish without a basket the last five minutes of that third quarter, Debbie, as they went on a 13-1 run. Well, I thought the speed, the open floor, their ability off the bounce, getting to the free throw line, and Diamond and Cheyenne Sellers coming alive a little bit in that third quarter. Well, Notre Dame has done a good job to this point managing their foul trouble. I don't look at it as 12 if I'm Neil Ivy. I look at it like a four possession game. And if you can get two, three stops in a row and you can score, then you're right back in it. This was the group that went on a 13-0 run in the first half for Notre Dame with Ebo on the sideline still with four fouls, but Kylie Watson will play with four fouls. Well, this is the lineup I told you I really liked yeah. for Notre Dame. And KK Bransford gets caught up in a, a double team. The, you know, we usually talk about ATOs and after timeouts from an offensive perspective, but for Brenda Freeze, her ATOs defensively have been very good. When there's a stoppage of time, they get a defensive steal or a stop. They've been very good on that end. Masonis mid range. Sellers offensive rebound. Well, they have had second chance opportunities to really bust this thing open, but not able to convert a whistle and a foul on the Irish. Well, and Notre Dame is a good three point shooting team, but they're not a great three point shooting team. So Neil Ivy's team, honestly, with this group on the floor, Citron and Westbelt are their best three point shooters. But you don't need to just settle on the three. They have to get some stops and then get to the free throw line. Well, West Bell with those four fouls is going to take a take a seat. That's a tough coaching um, move right here, right? Because you're down 12 and you're taking one of your best players with four fouls to the bench. And Sellers gets a kind bounce. I wouldn't leave her over there too long. That whole front line, four fouls for the Irish. Maryland trying to build on a big third quarter. Notre Dame trying to stem the flow here and get it back in their direction. A really good job of defending that action by Maryland. That's a scouting report defensive series. They're running that play I call America's play, though. Reject the screen, drive baseline, rescreen, fill behind. They switched on all that. <laughs> Whoa, almost the three-point play from Myers, who crashed pretty hard. America's play because everybody runs it. Right? Yes, that's exactly right, yes. and everybody knows it. Oh, yes. Late on the help by Marshall. And Abby Myers, the Ivy League Player of the Year last year. We're seeing a lot of kids like her, right, that have had success maybe at a lower level. And with their final year of eligibility, they decide, I need to challenge myself against the best. And a lot of teams that are making deep runs in this tournament have players like that who have elevated their games and trying to make a big moment in the postseason. Well, she definitely has had some big moments for Maryland, and that's why she's here. This is what she wanted to do. This is her dream, right? Play in the NCAA tournament. Get a chance to advance. Winner of this one will have to roll through South Carolina or UCLA. That's our next Sweet 16 here in Greenville. Bransford scores down low. Yeah, that's the first Irish basket in their last seven shot attempts. Miller off the bounce. And a blocking foul called. I'm going to attribute Diamond's second half partly to her aggressiveness off the bounce. The other part that I've been saying is how Brenda Freeze gets her quality catches in different spots on the floor where she can be effective. She is a really tough check. Okay, and Brenda has coached a ton of great offensive players in her time in Maryland. 
And Diamond is right up there with him. We saw her come out early out of the locker room at halftime, take shot after shot after shot, and kept missing and missing and missing. But she kept shooting. You know, you got to see one go through the net. And uh, she has come out much better offensively, Angel, in this second half. Oh, yeah, absolutely. One of the words that best describes Diamond, I would say, is persistent. Just being here all four years. She said, this is something that I am proud of. She said, I stayed at one school. I went through everything. I worked hard to get on the court her freshman year. She said, playing through injury and coming back last season. She said, I've been steadfast. I journal. She said she has a side Instagram, and she talks to herself. She makes sure that her mentality is always correct when she steps on the floor. I self-talk all the time around <laughs> Beth because she doesn't listen to me. But no, Diamond was the MVP of the Big Ten Tournament her sophomore year. Junior year, she battled some knee injuries, right? Very nicely yep. done by Angel about her freshman year trying to get minutes. And then this year, she's turned into this incredible leader. And she wants to win above all else. It's not about Diamond, her numbers. It's about the team's success. And when they lost some good players in the portal, they picked up some really good players, and she has helped them by keeping them all connected. Notre Dame turns it over again. By the way, you're not talking to yourself. You're having a staff meeting in your head. <laughs> and yeah, I've got many committees. <laughs> a lot of committees up there. Here's Miller. Cross. Um, too many steps. Ebo back on the floor for Notre Dame. They got to start making a move here. Seven and a half to save their season. Well, and Ebo, if she's going to be on the floor, you got to get her posted up and you got to get her a deep catch. And there's some miscommunication right there. That would be part of the frustration that sometimes a point guard comes in handy. Well, once in a while. Once in a while. They are playing without theirs. Olivia Miles out with the injury. Masonis. Sellers. She has really elevated her game as well this year. I was giving her a hard time yesterday because I think she's grown. I mean, I, I know, I think her dad is seven feet, right? Brad Sellers? Yeah, yeah. All right, so from her freshman year to now, she has grown at least an inch. When we went back to back with her and Diamond, there wasn't much separation there between them, and Diamond's legit 6'3". Angel? Debbie, you're right. Her dad is seven feet, and he's pretty much a big deal. I mean, Brad Sellers is currently the mayor of Warrensville, Ohio. It's the cities he's from. And most notably, he's also an NBA vet who played with Jordan on the Bulls when he made the pass to MJ that ultimately helped him beat the Cavs to win the series in 1989. I'd say leadership also runs in the family. Cheyenne was talking about how she was pretty much the GM to get the right pieces on this roster after her freshman year. And he's obviously helping the great city of Warrensville, guys. Is he listening to us in that right ear? Did you see he's got the, uh, he's got the <laughs> ear? Or has he got Maryland radio on? Taking it all in with his daughter playing a huge role for the Terps here in the second half. Few people have had to deal with the portal and with comings and goings as much as Brenda Freeze. So, Bad news, you gotta, you know, you gotta make some lemonade out of those lemons. She and her staff have figured out ways to incorporate new players year in and year out. You lose 85% of your scoring. You're watching one of your former players, Angel Reese, have an All-American season at LSU. And oh, by the way, they're in this building in the opposite side of the bracket. And yet, they have come together, gelled throughout the season, playing their best ball down the stretch. And other than running into Caitlin Clark a couple of times, they, they have not lost since early January. And they do have a, a W on their resume yeah. over Iowa. They avenged one of those. You know what, I, I think, you know, Brenda has always been known as a really good offensive coach, but I think Diamond and 
some others are part of the transition to becoming more of a two-way team. And that's what Cheyenne Sellers wants them to be known as. She told us that, you know, we, we do take a lot of pride in our defense. It's not as much the soft cover that it used to be. As we've seen all game, it's an extended trapping. You know, you don't know when the traps are coming. It's a little bit more unpredictable than it's been in the past. Miller knocks down the jumper. 16 now for Diamond. Players were talking to us about confidence, about taking advantage of opportunities. There were four starting jobs open this year for Maryland. And like all great teams, you got to have that blue guy. And that blue guy has been Faith Masonis. The senior out of Belmar, New Jersey, who last year suffered the ACL injury, could have gone somewhere else if she wanted, stuck around. And all the Maryland players you talk to, they talk about Faith, keeping everybody together throughout the tough times earlier in the year. Well, Faith's mom played at St. Joe's, I'm guessing for the legendary, maybe Muffet McGraw, maybe Jim Foster. Also was on the coaching staff with uh, Coach Oriema. Ellen is her name. Got a good basketball family. Yes. A lot, of, a lot of fighting at the dinner table for an extra muffin. How about today's Capital One rewarding performance? And it's a Terp combo, Debbie. Well, it is a nice combination if you're a Terrapin fan because Cheyenne Sellers has been terrific off the bounce. Brenda Freeze has opened the court up with their spacing. And Diamond Miller has been able to get a quality catch here in the second half. They have been fantastic combining for 25 of Maryland's 36 second half points. They also combine for seven assists, three blocks, seven steals, Woo. nine rebounds, and 31 points. We're working on a combo quadruple header for the Terps. And after uh, Notre Dame had the advantage in the first half, we talked about wearing opponents down, and Maryland has done just that. They've scored 20 points off of turnovers. They've scored 16 fast break points. And they have fouled out Lauren Ebo. And Westbeld and Watson continue to play with four fouls. I thought it was a, a critical foul in the beginning of the fourth when Westbeld picked up that fourth foul with a 12-point deficit. It was a tough coaching decision for Coach Ivy and her staff, but that allowed Maryland to just get a little bit more separation at that time. Now it's a 20-point Maryland lead. Remember, uh, this was a Notre Dame team that was here last year and had a heartbreaking loss to NC State in the Elite Eight. Or excuse me, in the Sweet 16. Allowed NC State to go to the Elite Eight. South Carolina and UCLA. Maryland saw South Carolina earlier this year. Diamond Miller did not play in that game. And I think they're going to get Diamond. Uh, That's what you call the butt foul. Diamond, Diamond struck out the uh, struck out the backside on that one <laughs> on the cutter. Bumping the cutter. Oh literally. yeah, literally. <laughs> Does UCLA have a chance, Debbie? They were close against South Carolina in their regular season matchup, which was in Columbia. So they'll be used to the hostile crowd that will be pro Carolina here in Greenville. And they do have Charisma Osborne, who's dropped 36 on Oklahoma in their second round win, the best scoring game of any Bruin ever in the postseason. Well, well here's the thing. Uh, UCLA plays a style that's not common in the SEC. Okay? Um, it is a spread, five out. Empty the low block, and you're going to force South Carolina to have to guard a lot of cutting and screening action. Okay, there's Dawn Staley, though, will have a formula for it, and they've seen it before. But I can tell you this UCLA, having played South Carolina, it's very similar to what Dawn says about playing UConn. If you don't keep yeah. playing UConn, how are you ever going to beat them, right? 
Well, if you don't keep playing South Carolina now, how are you ever going to beat them? And UCLA has played them a couple of times. And this year, they only lost by nine points in Columbia. Of course, when you talk about South Carolina, undefeated, and it's a rarity that opponents can keep it close against them. They're beating foes by over 30 points per game. Well, They've got not one, but two National Defensive Player of the Year finalists. And, and they got athletes at all five spots on the floor. And it's a misnomer that they score 81 points a game as well. So their offense is better than it was yes. last year. But last year they proved that you could play D and win the national championship and not have great offensive numbers. Their numbers were good offensively, but they weren't the best we'd ever seen in the championship. But so this year it's a much different situation. Well, the front line is unparalleled right now in the game. They, they can bring bigs not only in their starting lineup, but off the bench. And it's a special senior class at Carolina that wants to go out with another national championship ring. Remember, they, they almost had a shot at a second. They were one of the favorites with Oregon. In fact, Carolina was number one when the season ended due to COVID a few years ago. But they have one from last year. They're trying to get another one. And when you put into perspective just how good the senior class is, okay, here's some classes to remember and the faces of those classes. Back to Shamiqua. 131 wins. Tarasi years. Maya Moore. Look at Maya Moore's class record. Of course, Stewie with four national championships. That group at Connecticut. And South Carolina has a chance to join that kind of conversation with another national championship. Their senior class, they call themselves the Freshies, have rarely lost throughout their four-year careers. It's pretty amazing how you yeah. can come together and, and sacrifice for the greater good for a better cause, right? And that's yep. exactly what these young women have done at South Carolina. And I definitely believe this house will be uh, Columbia Northwest. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Northwest. Don't start going to transitive property and derivatives <laughs> on me. You know, well, let's, let's talk about Notre Dame for a second, Beth, because, yep. you know, Neil Ivey, Long time Notre Dame, won a championship as a player, has had incredible success. This year wins the ACC regular season and what I have thought was the best year the ACC's had in a deepest, yeah. maybe ever, the deepest that the league has ever been. Eight teams make it to the NCAA tournament, the most of any league. And, and her team, you know, she's she reinvented her team a couple of times with injury. First it was the Mabry injury, then it was the Ebo injury, and, and then, you know, then it was the Olivia Miles injury. And, you know, it's not going to diminish the success they had. It's certainly stuff that they can build on. And uh, you can see the tears for Dara right there. I mean, this is when it hits you at home when you're watching a senior knowing she didn't get to finish the way she wanted and her team's not going to finish the way they wanted. And it's heartbreaking because we yeah. know the Mabry so well. well. They've we been know. around for, what, 11 years, the Mabry sisters. Patty passed yeah. the Kleenex. Lauren Ebo, who transferred in to get a shot at a Final Four. She's one of the few that won't be back next year, those, those two. Everybody else, of course, Olivia Miles has just been announced as a knee injury. Hopefully, she would be ready to go to start next year. And then Niel Ivey is bringing in not one, but two McDonald's All-Americans next season. So plenty to look forward to for Notre Dame. Plenty to look forward to for Maryland. They're celebrating a sweet 16 win, and they will start to get ready for the Elite Eight. And it's a remarkable job by Brenda Fries as well. I mean, you know, when you lose 85%, and you lose some star power, and you re- Invent or retool. It's not even reinventing. It's it's a style of play that works. It's proven to win. And she has more athleticism and they have length and they've got some players that are hurt that'll be back next year as well. Lavender Briggs got it. Gigi Cook has checked into the ball game from Maryland. Ava Ciola will come on, and so will Milo Reynolds for the Terps. Jenna Brown into the ball game for Notre Dame. And, uh, 
I'm sure it's some conversation right there with Coach Freeze about, hey, this is why you came here. This is what you did. Your hard work is paying off. And those teams that have already advanced, wow, how exciting is this going to be, right? Can't wait. 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Yeah, double dip tomorrow night. And Maryland, the first team into the doubleheader on Monday night. They will play either South Carolina or UCLA, and then still to come this evening, doubleheader from Seattle as we wrap up the Sweet 16. Can't you wait to see what Jeff Walls is going to do oh, with yeah. Caitlin Clark? Let's go, let's go, let's go. Good block for Prosper. Even though she joined the Irish early, she will still benefit from an extra year. Bucket is good for Jenna Brown, the grad student from Atlanta. But it is a day for the Maryland Terrapins. It has been a second half to fear the turtle. They trailed at the break. And they have busted loose here in the second half, led by Shy Sellers and Diamond Miller. Bruins are getting ready. They are the West Coast representative in the Sweet 16. Utah knocked out yesterday. Top-seeded Stanford eliminated in the second round. Celebration is underway for Maryland. The Terrapins, a winner over Notre Dame to return to the Elite Eight.